Testing, testing. Praise the Lord. Are we on? Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I am so glad to be here on this Tuesday night. Uh, this Tuesday night, June the 16th, 15th. All right. Man, time is moving. Amen. Come on in. Tell everybody to come on in. New Life Experience is on the air. Uh, tell someone we are in for our Bible study on tonight. Bible study. Yes. Y'all come tell somebody. All right. Uh, it's time to have Bible study. And then like when we used to be younger, they said, come on in, y'all. Come on in the church. Come on in the building. And uh, we're going to have Bible study. Let's, let's uh, break bread and talk of his goodness. Tell somebody. Tell somebody Pastor John is on tonight for Bible study. Tell somebody. We're going to, to uh, pray. and We're going to get into his word. We give you a moment. I can kind of see people running in church, coming on in. Come on in. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Amen. God bless you. It's a beautiful day. Hot day. Hot day. But don't you know it's going to be hotter than that if you don't miss, if you miss heaven. Yeah, it's going to be worse than that. Amen. So uh, let's make every effort. Let's put every effort into making it into heaven. I got to make it. I have to make it to heaven. If I can't stand this 101 degree today, I believe I saw it. Ain't no way in the world I can handle anything hotter. So tell somebody, it's time to get saved. Be saved. Not, not get saved. Get ready. Be ready. Amen. All right. We're so excited tonight about being here. We're going to uh, pray. Pray. Let's continue to pray for those that are sick, shut in, uh, those that are in the hospital. Pray for my son. He's in the hospital. But I'm believing God to... Uh, heal his body and so he can have a recovery and there's been some that had surgeries and God brought them through we thank you uh, for your prayers continue to pray for our seniors give them a call check up on them let them know that you're thinking about them and you love them amen call one another encourage one another in the name of Jesus uh, father we thank you let's close our eyes father we thank you for another day Another opportunity, another moment, another day we've never seen before. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, keeping us, Lord God, from danger seen and unseen. Oh, God, you're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. You are awesome God. We love you this afternoon. We love you this evening. Thank you for being so kind to us. God, we ask you right now to look down on those that are sick. Look down on those that are in bereavement. Look down on those that have lost loved ones due to violence and all oh, this senseless killing. Lord God, we ask you right now to touch the hearts of people. Touch their minds, Lord God. Rebuke the enemy on every side. Hallelujah. Oh, God, give them a mind to be saved. Oh, God, we ask you right now, comfort those families. Comfort families, Lord God, that's going through the hour of bereavement. We know you're able to do it. God, we ask you right now to bless us tonight in this word. As we open up this word, we ask you right now that we move self out of the way that you get the glory. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am excited. Excited. Listen, I want, before I get started, uh, make sure, tell someone, tell everyone, that listen, from now on, on Sunday, we come on to church. Come on in God's house. Come on in God's house. It's time to come on now. The doors of the church is open. And uh, you may have missed us this past Sunday. You really didn't miss us. We, we are making a conscious effort to hopefully, hopefully invite you back into the house of the Lord. Uh, come on back in. We won't be streaming We'll be streaming, but we won't be streaming live as much as we have been because it, uh, we want you, we want to try to encourage you to get on, come on back in God's house. 
you'll see it every now and then, but not as often as we have been doing it. So that's what we'll be doing. In fact, on this Sunday, we'll be recording, uh, but uh, we, we, we want you to come on in church. Father's Day this Sunday. We want to come in and celebrate the fathers. So tell someone uh, new life is going to be in church. And the reason being, as you all know, it's the NBA basketball finals, and uh, I've been watching them. I enjoy sports. I enjoy it. And when I look and when they pan that audience and they say, listen, every, it's about 90% capacity. The people are coming back, celebrating their teams and their basketball team, shouting and hollering and some with the mask, but the majority no mask and jumping up and down and hollering and whatever they spreading, they're spreading or they're taking their chances. Listen, I thought about that thing. I said, man, we need to come on in God's house and give God some glory. We need to stand up and give God some praise. Why are we so afraid of coming back? So we want you to tell somebody, come on back in the God's house. Come on back in. Tell them we're going to be in service this Sunday. So uh, invite somebody. Let them know. Come on back. And we can stay our distance and put your mask on or what have you, whatever you're comfortable with. But we want you to come on. We'll still check your temperature and all of those things so you can feel somewhat comfortable. But I want you all to come on back in God's house. Tell somebody, come on. All right, it's time to come on back in God's house. Let's do it. Amen. Amen. So uh, with that being said, I want you to turn your Bibles. I do have a thought tonight. A thought. Get your Bible ready. Get your Bible ready. I had a couple of uh, uh, versions that I was reading and looking into, but tonight I think I'll just stick with the King James Version and uh, uh, stay there because I had some thoughts in other versions, but I didn't want to back and forth to confuse you or what have you, uh, but I'm going to stick with it tonight. Go to Colossians, Colossians the second chapter, uh, Colossians the second chapter, second chapter, and look at the sixth through the ninth verse. And here's what Paul is telling us. Paul is saying, y'all see it, Colossians 2. Six, two and six. Yes. Amen. Y'all ought to get excited about the word. I get excited about reading God's word. As ye have therefore received Christ. This is what Paul's saying. Receive Christ Jesus, the Lord. So walk ye in him. Root it. Build up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through vain, excuse me, spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. My topic tonight would be simply says, remain focused. Remain focused. And uh, as I thought about that text or the topic you know how it is when you're looking in through some lens, and uh, or, or or and if it's not focused, you have to adjust it, the binoculars or whatever you're looking through your camera, and you have to find what you're looking at and focus in on it and and zero in on it, and uh, 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 remain focused tonight. We 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 need to so 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 many people this pandemic has caused people to lose focus. It has caused people to uh, not only not come to church, but they have lost their desire. They, they don't pray like they used to. They don't read their word like they used to. Uh, 
Uh, they, they don't fast. They don't, they, they, we, we haven't been able to come in like we want to. They're just not committed like they, they're not even getting up one time, one morning, one time we get up early in the morning and get out on our knees and pray. Why? Because we were focused, because we, we, had, we, we had our eyes, we, we, we were going after Christ. And, and, and so many today has, have, have been falling away. And that's the danger of what we've been going through these last 15, 17 months, whatever it has been. People have lost focus. They've been out of church so long, they don't even know how to come back. They're scared to come back. But they go to the mall. They go to the grocery store, they go travel. Oh, the people are traveling. They go to the restaurants and they're doing all of these things, having a good time, having their little get together and having a great time. And there's nothing wrong with that. But then they have lost focus on Christ. They have lost focus on coming into God's house. So that's why I'm talking about it tonight. We need to remain focused. Remain focused. I also was thinking about this. Uh, if you ever notice downtown, uh, when they have horses and the trolleys, or what I mean, the horses doing all of the tourism, and you pay attention, they had them horses lined up, and they have some things on their eyes. So they, I think they call them blinders. Put them blinders. In other words, they're trying to get them to avoid distractions. They're trying to get them to remain focused on where the driver or rider is, is t steering them. You know, they, if, they're not, if they're not focused, they can be spooked by something out of the, their peripheral vision on the right side or the left. In fact, uh, 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 I think Proverbs, Proverbs, look at Proverbs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, go to Proverbs. I, I just thought of that. I read that earlier today. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Look at this. And you're going to hold your spot. We're going to come back to Colossians. But look at what Proverbs, I was trying to uh, explain that a little bit to you, but I want you to look at Proverbs, uh, 25th verse, Proverbs 4 and 25. 4 and 25, y'all have it? Proverbs, Proverbs, look at this, look at this said. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, in other words, Pay attention to where you're going. Pay attention to what you're doing. Paying, paying attention to your spirit man. Paying attention to your, your thoughts. Paying attention where you're walking. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Look at what he say. 27 verse. Don't turn to the right hand nor turn to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. In other words, pay attention where you're going. If you're walking and you see there's a hole or you see there's a trap or you see there's a danger, you have to change your direction. In other words, I'm remaining focused. When I'm driving, I should be focused on the task at hand. So many people are distracted by the phones. They're distracted by the radio. They're distracted by other things that's going on. I've seen people Driving and putting makeup on, looking in the mirror. They're not focused. We're allowing so many other things to distract us. But tonight, my friend, my brother and sisters and God, I'm telling you, we have to remain focused. We have to, all, we have to put those blinders on and stay focused. Because there's so much that's going on around us that it calls us and, 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 and it spook us. Cause us to jump and we get off track. It's kind of like it's kind of like we, you're going, you're trying to keep in a straight line and trying to keep in the straight and narrow, and then and then you get off, you fall off because you're not focused. Our mind, our spirit, is not focused. So we have to remain focused. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Keep on working. Some people have given up. So, they all, what's the use? And they wind up, oh, I can do just as good at home. Yes, you can, but you can do a whole lot better in God's house. You can do a whole lot better with, among your brothers and sisters. Remain focused. 
Come on back. We got to get back in God's house. That's where your strength is. That's where my strength is. Amen. Remain focused. All right, go back to Colossians. This is Bible study, so I like to do some reading. I have a little bit of reading I want to do tonight. Go back to Colossians, the third chapter. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm so glad you all here. Amen. Colossians, the third chapter. Look at that first verse. Look at what Paul says. If ye then be risen in Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Then he says in the third, the second verse, set your affections on things above and not on the things of the earth. That means my heart, my desire, my focus is on things above. Yes, and not on this earth. Because if you set your things on the earth, set your things on material things, you set your things on careers or whatever it is, all of those things will fade away. That pretty new car you drove off the showroom floor that you admire so much, after a period, as soon as you drive it off the floor, it depreciates. Then after that period of time, it's rust start coming in, dings and, and, and all this fading paint. All, so, so in other words, that's fading away. That's going to rust away. But when we set our affection on things above, which is eternal life, you know what? That's what keeps me focused. When I think, I think about these things, I was talking to my son in the hospital room yesterday, and I was telling him, yes, we may be going through some trials and tribulations. You may be pain and suffering, and he's, he's, he's paralyzed waist down. But listen, I told him just like this. i much rather go to heaven without one of my limbs or without or even with a disability than to go to hell with all of your limbs. In other words, this little temporary thing that you're dealing with, Whatever amount of time God allowed you to stay on this earth, that's not your main objective. My objective on this earth, in spite of what I go through, in spite of what you go through, should be on things above. Man, I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. I can't wait to see him. Songs say, oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever, y'all know it, of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past. This stuff that you're going through, these trials and tribulations you're going through, is going to pass away. Cares all past. I'm home at last. That's where my focus is. That's where our focus is. Ever to rejoice. So, my brothers and my sisters, we may be going through some stuff. We may go through a little trials and tribulations. You may have to cry. You may have to go through some disappointments. You may have to go through some sickness. We may have to go through some loss of a loved one. We're actually going through this pandemic. It's COVID-19, but we have to remain focused on things above. Keep your blinders on. Don't be distracted. Don't allow the enemy to pull you away from your, your eternal life. Eternal life. Come on, somebody. Eternal life. Ain't but two places when he said, come my people. He, he, ain't but two places we're going. You got, it's, it's, two, you got, it's a choice. You got heaven or hell. So I'm remaining focused on heaven. You got to tell, your, tell yourself, I'm going. I'm going to remain focused. I'm not going to lose. I'm not going to let the devil steal my joy. I'm not going to let the devil steal my, steal my desire for going to church, my desire to pray, my desire to read. I challenge those to this past Sunday, and I'm going to challenge you. Each day before you do any other thing, we should focus on reading his word and meditating on his word. We so we so inundated. We are so ex, uh, we so have so much uh, 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 we so anxious 
to get to see what's on Facebook, so anxious to see what's on Twitter, or whatever, Instagram, whatever these, these, these uh, mediums we have, to see what everybody else is talking about, see what everybody else is doing. Listen, seek ye first. Put him first. I would, I'm challenging myself. Before I do any other thing, I need to read a scripture. And there's no excuse. There's no excuse. You can fix it where your, your Bible app or whatever can have you a moment of devotion, have you a moment of, 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 of meditation, give you a scripture. Start your day off. Start your day off. Shut, shut everything else off. Start your day off with God. Start your day off in his word. Start your day off with a moment of prayer, meditation. Well, I don't have time. Yes, you have time. You have time. We, you can take time. You can make time. We make time for everything else because we, if, if you got to be at work at a certain time, you get up in time to go to work. So now if it means I, I need to get into this word a few more minutes before I go to work, get up a few more minutes. Dedicate yourself to God. Remain focused. You know how it was when you first got saved, you first experienced the Holy Ghost, you first experienced God. Man, you were so, so enthused. You just, oh, man, just reading your word and just excited. What happened? You lost focus. We lost that first love. We lost that desire. I remember a time when we used to come to church uh, before service start, people would come in and pray. Not, they, they not just getting, the service started at 7, 30, 7 o'clock, they're in 10 or 15 minutes early, 30 minutes early. What are they doing? Praying. Focusing. Focusing on God. We ought to get back to that. So instead of just coming to church and looking around like we're waiting on a, a show, well, man, we need to get down and focus on God. Pray. Pray. Let's get back. Let's focus. Bring, put them blinders back up. Listen, I've been, decide, I've been sidetracked. Challenge you that. Every day before, if, if, if you stroll and got time to do that on your phone and all that, man, listen, your first thing, first objective is to focus. I need to read his word. I need to get something in my mind, get something in my spirit, and you will find out your day will be a whole lot better. Why? Because you've, you've allowed him to come in to, to set the tone of your day, set the tone of your mind. I'm focusing in on you, God. I need you to lead me and guide me, to direct me. And if I, in other words, if I put you first, you're going to direct my path. I'm acknowledging him first. Oh, yeah, I hope y'all getting something out of this. I'm liking this myself. I'm talking, talking to myself. Focus. All right? Set your thing, set your affections, the third, second verse. Did I read? Where did I read? Start reading that. Did we go to Colossians? Three and two. That's it. Set your affections on things above and not on the things of earth, of the earth. For ye were dead and light, and your life is hidden. In Christ, with Christ in God. Fourth verse, when Christ, who is our life, listen, woo, Christ, who is our life, he is your sustainer. He is your source. He is the one I'm focusing on. When he shall appear, then ye shall appear also, ye shall appear also with him in glory. In other words, in other words, I've been focusing on him. I've been reading his word. I've been studying his word. I've been praying. I've been meditating. Not religion. I have a relationship with him, and I'm looking for him. I want to see him. I want to see him. Oh, I want to see him. Oh, I can't wait to see him. Who are you talking about? I want to go. I want to see Jesus. Oh, I want to see him. I'm focusing on him. That's what helps me personally to do what's right. That's what should help, that'll help you to focus on doing what's right because the spirit of God, the Christ that dwelleth in you, hey, man, he's our hope of glory. I want to see him. All right? Second Timothy. 
2 Timothy 2. Amen. I'm excited about this word tonight. 2 Timothy 2. Look at the first verse. First four verses. Look at this. Look at what Timothy said. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in, G in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who also shall be able to teach others. Now, there, thou therefore endure hardness. That's what I like. That. I don't want, that's what I was looking for. Endure hardness as a good soldier. No man entangleth, no man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. In other words, I can't get, I can't keep get entangled with the things of this world because I've been chosen by God. You have been chosen by God. Your life is in him. You, have, you are hidden in Christ. You are hidden in Christ. So the enemy, the enemy is always trying to distract you. He's always trying to get you off course. He always trying to come into your peripheral vision to get you to lose focus of what you're doing. Have you ever made up in your mind, listen, say, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. Well, look, listen, I'm going to fast tomorrow. I'm going to fast. I'm going to fast. That's, I'm, I'm, man, I'm making up my mind. I'm going to fast tomorrow. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm going to fast, and I'm going to fast and maybe to noon or fast at 6 o'clock, whatever. And you get up in the morning, and you get halfway through, and your mind, you, any other day, some of us can go all day without eating, with no thought about it. But as soon as you focus in, saying, listen, I'm going to draw closer to God. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to consecrate myself. <laughs> and as soon as you do that, boy, you can smell a piece of chicken 10 miles away. That enemy come through your senses. Somebody come to work, and they bring a free meal and set it up for you. For everybody. And what happened? You, if you're not careful, you'll lose focus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought I made up my mind. I wasn't going to do that today. I'm going to fast today. I'm, I'm going to meditate. I'm going I'm to I'm uh, 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 consecrate myself. That enemy knows all the time. He's trying to get you off track. Trying to get you to lose focus. Y'all know y'all laughing because it happened to me all the time. Every now and then it happened. So you have to make up in your mind, I'm going to focus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through this thing. No, that's all right. I'll get another time. Or I'll save my plate, whatever. But I can't lose focus. I can't lose sight. You can't lose sight. Amen. So uh, remain focused, you all. Remain focused. Because we have, he has chosen us to be a soldier, a good soldier. And the Christ is within us. Look at 1 John. 1 John, I got through Colossians and Timothy. I want to go to John, 1 John. 1 John, I can do a whole lot of talking, but I like to get into the, get you some words, get you some reference so you can go back and revisit them. 1 John 2 and 17. Well, no, 1 John, not, not, no, do 2 and 15. 2 and 15. Ah. Uh, 2 and 12. Going up to 2 and 12. First John. Uh, Y'all excuse me. I just I want to do a little reading. First John 2 and 12. Look at this. Look at what John said. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Y'all get that? I write unto your fathers, because he have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the father. Then he say in the 14th verse, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. 
I written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. And the word of God abideth in you, and ye have all ye have overcome the wicked one. It's all he's talking. Uh, John is saying, "Listen, I wrote unto your fathers, and I told you, told them about it. Now I'm writing to you." Past and present. I'm, I've wrote unto, written unto them. Now I'm writing unto you. What did he say? Here's a warning. Here's what he's telling us. Here's how he's telling us to stay focused. Look at that 15th verse. He said, look at what John said. He said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I'm going to say that again. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In other words, I can't put nothing else ahead of God. I have to put him first. I have to put him ahead of everything. I love my wife. I love my family. I love my children, my grandchildren, but I have to put God ahead of them. I even love myself. Certain days. <laughs> but I had to put myself, I had to put him ahead of everything. Head of my job. Head of my career. Head of wherever. Seek him first. I have to deny myself. You have to deny everything. I have to love him with all of the Bible says, all your heart, mind, and soul. Everything should be focused on him, and then everything else should fall in, pl in place under that. Prioritize. Love not the world. Nor the th now, it doesn't say you can't enjoy the things of the world, but he said love not the world. Some people are putting things way ahead of God, all kind of stuff. They put everything ahead of him. All I got to do is I got to. They're putting it ahead of God. What he say? Love not the world. This, this, here's, a, here's another warning. That 15, uh, 16 verse, he said, for all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, and is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world shall pass away, the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God will abide forever. That's where I'm looking for that abiding forever. That's where my focus is. That's what my objective is. That's what our objective is. The reason, the reason we serve God and the reason we love him and the re reason because we, we know who he is and we know he's God, because, listen, I want to abide with him forever. He's keeping us here on this earth, but one of these days we're going to abide with him forever. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine no sickness, no pain, no heartaches, the disappointment that you feel right now, the uncertainty that we're going through now, the, 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 all of these type of emotions and feelings and, and the, the things that we're experiencing? I got to focus. It, it ain't going to last always. If this is all that you look for on this earth, you are men most miserable. No wonder you're miserable when things don't go your way. But listen, I, I, when, I think, when I think about my destination, when I think about my, my final resting place, not down in earth, but when he come back and take us back, I, I get excited about my eternal life. So you got to remain focused. One more scripture and I'm going to let you go. 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. I know I've given you quite a few scriptures, but you can go back at them. I don't want you to, to leave me. That's why I'm trying to hurry up and get it, get, get it in for you so you can get something what I'm talking about tonight. Second three, Peter 3 and 10. Why should I remain focused? Why should you and I remain focused? Look at this. Look at this. Look at what he say. 10th verse, but the day of the Lord, wait a minute, go to that ninth verse. Look at the ninth verse. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, 
as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us. He's waiting us to get focused. That's why he's patient with us, he's trying to get us to get in line. He's long-suffering toward us, not willing there, I love that. Not willing that any should perish, but should all that but that all should re come to repentance. He's given us and he's given you and I an opportunity to get focused. He's given us a you and you and I an opportunity to repent. He's given you and I an opportunity to turn from your wicked ways. He's given us an opportunity to 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 to, to get into that straight way, that straight gate. He's given us an opportunity to repent. All right? Look at that 10th verse. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and in the night, and in, in that, in the which the heaven shall pass, heaven shall pass away, excuse me, with, with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth shall also, and the word, the work that are uh, therein shall be burned up. In other words, in other words, there's going to be a great noise. There's going to be a great sound. The trump of the Lord is going to sound. And all these things are going to happen. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be? and all holy converse, conversation and godliness. Looking, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, nevertheless, we according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Amen. Where, look at that 14th verse. Wherefore, beloved, see that ye look for such things. Be diligent that ye may be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. Look, I'll skip down. You can read that other verses, but look, look at that 18th verse. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. I'm looking to be with God. I'm focusing. We are focusing on being with him. Amen. That's our ultimate goal. That's our ultimate goal. Go, you and I. That's why we go through things. But we, 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 can, we can focus on, we, we, we go through the trials and tribulations, but we have to focus on him. Make up in your mind, oh, I'm going to see him. I want to look upon his face. So whatever I go through, whatever you ever go through, and I want to encourage you to be in, to, to, don't, don't, get, don't get discouraged. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let the enemy sidetrack you. Don't let your enemy cause you to throw your hands up and throw the white towel. In. Don't do it. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to lose focus because you are hidden in Christ. Remain focused. Remain focused. Again, be ye steadfast. Don't move. Don't move to the right or to the left. Stay right there. Stay focused. God's going to help you. God's going to help us. He's going to see us through. His grace and his, his grace and his mercy is sufficient for us. I'm going to pray for you. Hope you got something out of that tonight. I want you to remain focused. Don't give up. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. Don't focus on your problem. Focus, focus on your purpose. Get that? Focus on your purpose. Don't focus on your problem. Amen. God is a good God. Father, we thank you right now for your goodness. Thank you for this, this thought that you've given us. Thank you for this uh, moments and words of exhortation that we can help our brothers and our sisters to remain focused. Someone has become discouraged and come. Someone has given up. Someone has been, their heart is broken. Whatever it is, God, I ask you right now to bring them back into focus. 
Lord, you're giving them a chance to repent. Give them a chance. It's not your will that any should perish. You're giving them an opportunity. Every day we get up, every moment that you give us, it's an opportunity to keep in focus. And I thank you for it right now. Encourage my brothers. Look down on my sisters and my brothers and my sisters, Lord. Lift their spirit. Help them right now to fight. Fight like a good soldier. Help them, Lord God, to hold on to eternal life. And we forever give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. We love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Come on to church Sunday. Look to see you. Father's Day. Amen.